What's up, sweaties? It's another episode of Collider Heroes. We are 113 in. That's right. You can watch the other 112 episodes now because we're live with 113. I got my special guest with me. Let's introduce John Roca. What's up, everybody? Uh, glad to be back. The water is as far away from me as possible. That's so right. I'm over <laughs> we, went, we, we went over a very special uh, water training sequence. It took about 25 minutes, but yeah. I think Roca's ready for that. Yeah, yeah. And you know who else we're ready for? It's Ashley V. Robinson. She's back. Thank Yay. you for coming back. Hey, thank you so much for having me back. I'm so yeah. excited. I've got some, uh, some awesome guests, and we've got some awesome things to talk about. So let's just jump right into our show about superheroes, supervillains, and all things super with our first topic today, <laughs> fan art. Guess what? We're just going to throw another <laughs> a little oh. fun flavor uh, from Brett Landin Landrenau. Uh, doing a little Jimelox action. That's right. All you people are going to be at San Diego Comic Con. Get ready to sweat it out. There's going to be a little poster for people to come by my booth. You're going to dig it. So uh, definitely, if you're going to be there, uh, you know, you know, I don't know if it'll be available anywhere else. But if you're going to be at San Diego Comic Con and you're in the trenches, you're in those, you know, the columns of sweat. You're yes. going to have to come by the booth. I don't even know what my number booth yet is, but I'll, <laughs> I'll get it to you eventually, and then come by and say hi. Uh, let's get into the real news right now, which is the Black Panther trailer yeah. dropped. And my God, what a trailer. The fireworks went off because this electric trailer went on. Uh, Ryan Coogler directs Chadwick Boseman as T'Challa. It's got Michael B. Jordan as Killmonger, Andy Serkis as Claw, and an all-star cast. Let's get, in, let's get into this Pulse Pounding trailer about Black Panther. I, I, I'll just say right off the bat, like they dropped this uh, poster which I was a little underwhelmed with. I mean, oh, Marvel yeah. really is really heavily into these you weird... Mean, you mean how the floor is shiny and the throne is shiny and he's matte? Yeah, and like, it looks like a poster was like his face was just cut out very yeah. crudely by yeah. a fourth grader in Photoshop. You have Photoshop skills. They got to get on this. I mean, I feel like everyone has got to get their up their poster game. Yeah. I mean, it's weird when Mondo posters are better than your regular movie poster. That Homecoming yeah. poster really looks like Iron Man 4. Yeah. yeah. No, I'm just saying. <laughs> it's true. like, I just want to see that that poster art game get back in. We got Struzan. We got Peak. We got a whole bunch of these amazing artists, but mm -hmm. they're all from the 80s. What happened in the last 25 yeah. years to poster art? I want to see that return, and it's not happening yet. But then that trailer dropped and made me forget all about that yeah. poster because, my God, man, what... I thought it was going to be a teaser. I thought it might mm -hmm. show like, you know, you're craning around a corner and you might see that, you know, the throne and there'd yeah. be like a voice, like Forrest Whitaker, we're, we're at war, some like <laughs> weird thing, some cool music, and then the Black Panther. Yeah. Man, we got a full, we got a full trailer. We did. It feels like it was yeah, a full trailer. And it got me so hyped and excited for it. I saw the Kirby Wakanda that I've always wanted to see. I saw a lot of amazing, let's, let's get into your opinion. Start right off with you, Ashley, let's yeah. go. I think it looks amazing, although I will say the effects look unfinished. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. Considering the movie comes out in February, that right. is to be expected. I'm really looking forward to what Wakanda is going to actually look like. The thing that really stood out to me was the costume design. Mm -hmm. Everyone looks so amazing, and I can't wait for groups, giant groups to do cosplay of those characters. Oh, totally. And it's so nice to see that Chadwick Boseman is surrounded by a cast of powerful African-American actors. Totally. Totally. This is going to be an incredibly important movie, and I think seeing this trailer on the heels of Wonder Woman, and it's not like millions of people don't watch the NBA finale either. So right. like, it's, there was a smart finale, finals. Uh, <laughs> there was a smart reason for putting it out when they did. But to me, the most exciting thing about the trailer, like aside from the fact that it's amazing, and then two of my favorite actors from Lord of the Rings inexplicably begin the trailer. Oh, how weird. Right? <laughs> like the two whitest white guys theory. start the Black yeah. Panther trailer. The Hobbit and his friend. <laughs> Precious. Yeah, how weird. But because we have the trailer now, it means that it's San Diego Comic Con, we're definitely getting a full scene, yeah. if not more. And like, that's what I'm most excited about is what it means going forward. Yeah. Definitely hold that thought about San Diego Comic Con. What are your thoughts on the yeah, trailer? Listen, to me, you can't even call it a teaser trailer. It's a minute and 53 seconds. Right. That's a trailer. Yeah. I don't care. In any other definition, that's a trailer. And I agree with you about the artwork. I, it, it seems to be like post movie posters have gone the way of the music video. Like, mm. there's, not, yeah. there's not that much dedication to them as they used to be before, so that's a shame. But that being said, this trailer kicked so much ass. It was so great, and you're right, Ashley, coming on the heels of Wonder Woman, you're like, okay, here we go with a African-American hero from Africa, mm -hmm. you know, all this kind of, well, he's not African-American, African hero, but for African-Americans watching this, for black people around the world watching this, like, it's so powerful to see the way he's portrayed. And you're right, they lead us in, these two white guys going back and forth, lead us
is in. But then you have all these inc incredible visuals of what Wakanda is going to look mm -hmm. like. Costume design, which is done by Ruth E. Carter, who did mm. Malcolm X and Selma and Amistad. So she's great. You have a new, you have a fee the first female cinematographer in Rachel Morrison. You see what she's going to do with the visual nature of it all. And I love the voiceover, which is this idea that it's like, uh, you know, the fountain of youth, uh, finding this place. Have you ever thought it was in South America? Ever no, it was always in Africa, right. which is, of course, what a lot of history books say is the cradle of civilization. Mm -hmm. And so there's so much about it that speaks to it. And then you're right, this idea of the younger African-American actors and the older Af with Angela Bassett, Forrest Whitaker, mm -hmm. which mirrors what's happening in the movie, which is old tradition versus new technology right. and how that works. You get older actors versus newer actors. How do they work together? And then these incredible shots of man ape and, of course, all the, the Dora Milaje, I hope I'm saying mm -hmm. that right, the shots of them in their red armor. So there's just yeah. so much about it that was just kick ass. And what was great? It felt like a standalone Marvel movie that right. does not need any Avengers like to come. Like Doctor right. Strange. Like Doctor yeah, yeah. Strange, exactly. Yeah. I think seeing Killmonger 2, A, his hair is amazing. Yeah. And I hope, that, <laughs> I hope that that catches on. So take that, men yeah. of the world. Um, I think it's amazing that playing the Human Torch is the best career move that you can make in Hollywood. Because yeah. we got Captain America and Killmonger. And I, Michael B. Jordan's amazing. He's going to be amazing in this movie. Yeah. Yeah, I wonder if the, how many people uh, from the Marvel Avengers are going to cross over. I mean, I could definitely Winter see... Soldier. Yeah, Winter Bucky's Soldier. Yeah, Bucky's there. He's there. Yeah. He's on ice. Yeah. And uh, I could definitely see uh, Steve Rogers showing up. Yeah. That would be great. Mm -hmm. um, boy, I'll say this. Like, seeing, like... Uh, we haven't even seen Wakanda, really. We've right. seen some concept art that mm -hmm. they released. But I love the way they've updated Jack Kirby's kind of super futuristic style yep. because this is the source of vibranium, mm -hmm. which is where every, where every villain <coughs> and every Excuse hero, me. every government agency wants their hands on this precious metal. Yeah. And it's only in Wakanda. So it's really cool that they're like setting this up. And also just the VO saying like, you know, to be a king, you, you know, it takes a lot. And yeah. it's sort of like they set this up with T'Challa in Civil War, mm -hmm. the things that he has to do, not only as a grown man, but now to step into that role as a king. Yeah. Even with vengeance, yeah. you cannot be a cold-blooded murderer. And I felt like that through line for Civil mm -hmm. War is now carrying through, in, through into Black Panther. Even, even the introduction of some of the main characters, we're going to get flashbacks of his father. We're yeah. going to get. If you look at the IMDb, get... there's there's young this person, young this yeah. person. There's yeah. going to be a lot of stuff in the history of Wakanda, mm -hmm. which has the potential to be amazing. Yeah. Totally. And once again, we're talking Wonder Woman. As I, I loved. The, the flashbacks yes. with too. Diana. Mm -hmm. I mean, I think Wonder Woman really is my one of my favorite films of mm -hmm. this year, mm -hmm. let alone superhero films. Man, Black Panther seems like it's going to carry on that like really cool standalone legacy that Doctor Strange and Wonder yeah. Woman have. But it's part of the Marvel Universe. We already know Black Panther is going to be in Infinity Wars. Man, it was going to just be like wearing a gigantic vibranium. You know, <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah. literally, who knows what's going to happen? But uh, you brought up a good point about you know San Diego Comic Con and what happens the week before that is D D twenty three, right? Yeah. And D twenty three is basically Marvel, Disney, uh, you know, Star Wars, all of the you know, it's all the same company, yeah. and that's like one week before Comic Con. So you know, Marvel's always done these incredible Hall H presentations. Last year was off the chain; it was crazy. It was step into the spotlight time this time. <laughs> I think, woo! I mean, we're all going to be like, what's up? Like, freaking out because, you know, we've come to expect nothing less than the most amazing panel yeah. presentations from Marvel, and we keep getting them. I mean, yeah. people are already worried and crying about, yeah, they're going to disappear. Then last year was literally just jaw dropping. Yeah. And we saw everything. We yeah. saw previews of Thor. We saw Doctor Strange. They showed you little nuggets of everything. Yeah. So a lot of people are like, well, what are they going to show? I'm not saying they're going to show you everything. They're yeah. going to be Black Panther. It's Ant-Man and the Wasp. It's right. going to be Infinity War. Captain Wars. Marvel. Captain yeah. Marvel. Right. Thor Ragnarok. Yeah. I mean, the films that they already have in production in the pipeline. Thor Ragnarok, Black Panther. And we're going to see concept art from Captain Marvel. We're going to see probably some amazing teaser, teaser of Infinity War. And what I'm, do you guys I'm think? sure during D23 they're going to be announcing some new slate because they usually mm -hmm. do. This is the time of year when you right. can expect to know at least what the next movie is, if not the next four or five or six or a hundred movies until well after yeah, I'm right. Dead movies are going to be. <laughs> uh, but I'm secretly hoping that they walk the entire, like, Avengers, Guardian, Black Panther, like a whole pantheon out yeah. on stage because mm. that would be like a hundred actors, yeah. which would be a scheduling nightmare, but it would be so impressive to see what the legacy of the MCU is right, right now. Definitely. And, definitely. and it'll be interesting to see how much of that actually they have footage of already. Because mm -hmm. remember, uh, 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 Zoe Saldana was saying that they had shot their Guardians of the Galaxy stuff already for Civil War, how yep. much of that is already in process. I do want to say one last thing about the trailer. What's amazing sure. is Ryan Coogler... As a director, every one of his films is distinctly different. And here we go again with something that feels distinctly different. And Chadwick Boseman doesn't say a word. 
Right. That's amazing mm-hmm. to sell your film without saying a word. It is just your, which is the Black Panther character. It is the regalness. Mm-hmm. It is the economy of speech. It is, it does not, he exudes that kind of strength without needing to speak about it. Which, he just is. And I thought that was brilliant. And I hope to see more of that at D23, more of how he works within the framework of what everyone else, because they're going to, it looks like it's going to be a whole family thing going at it against Killmonger and his crew and possibly Man Ape with Killmonger. Right. So there's so much going on there. What, how much of that connection? is going to bleed through that they're going to have their times mm-hmm. to shine as actors because he is doing so well with just with hardly any speech and it's fantastic. I think that's an interesting counterpoint as well to a lot of the characters that we love in the MCU are mouthy characters. Yes, 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 uh, yes. Like Spider-Man, like Iron Man. So Iron Man, yeah. If, if, if Black Panther, if T'Challa emerges as a character of little words and that's all he needs to command a room, that could be a really neat paradigm shift for the whole universe. Yeah. Well, he speaks when he needs to. Exactly. Yeah. Which I yeah, felt yeah. like his, his character in yeah. Civil War was like, was like that, mm-hmm. but he was like a driving force, and I feel like as long as they keep that going, uh, I can't wait. So yeah. count us all sold. And <laughs> uh, unfortunate news: Adam West uh, has passed away at 88. I know a lot of people have heard about that this past weekend after a short battle with leukemia. Uh, Adam West died on June 10th, 2017. Let us remember this talented man for his work on stage and screen and for giving us a fun, heroic, noble portrayal of Batman in the 1966 series. I want to say. I grew up on a steady mix of Godzilla, Sesame Street, The Electric Company, and number one for me was Batman. Batman was the hero that I looked up to every day at 4 o'clock in the afternoon. I watched him in black and white. That's all my parents had was a black and white television. Had no idea that it was actually shot in color. And I watched these uh, Cape Crusaders <laughs> fight a whole group of these weirdo bad guys. Adam West was my hero. He was my Batman. I dressed up as Batman multiple years in a row for Halloween. I originally had the little cheap plastic you know, mask. <laughs> and eventually I had my mom help me make a felt mask. The original cosplay, son. That's right. The older <laughs> people here were still doing that Please stuff. Please find pictures and share them. Yes, I will find the felt <laughs> Iron Man and the felt Batman outfits. Yes! I know there's got to be at least one picture of them. Um, I got a chance to meet uh, Adam West at a convention about six years ago, uh, and I got his autograph. I'm not a big autograph person, but I was like, man, I want a picture mm-hmm. of Batman yeah. uh, uh, you know, with Adam West's signature, and he was a really nice guy. He's also had an amazing career outside of that. A lot of people know him. You know, from yep. the Family Guy yep. series. Yep. I also loved him in Pete and Pete playing Principal Schwinger. Yeah. I also loved him <laughs> in the pilot, the Conan O'Brien uh, Look Well, which is on YouTube. Definitely check it out. They only yep. made one. Unfortunately, they never picked it up, but it's an incredible, funny show, mainly because it's got Adam West, and he was such a good character actor. And he was like, a lot of people refer to him as the Bright Knight, because mm-hmm. everybody yeah. like, the Dark Knight this, the Dark Knight that. And because of the 1966 Batman, it got a pretty bad rap for a long time. Up until very recently, the last three years, four years, we've seen Batman 66 comic yeah, really kind of mm-hmm. put that character back into the spotlight. Um, our pal Mark Andreco has been involved yep. in doing yep. that and Wonder Woman 77. So it's really fun to see, you know, that kind of series with the amazing Mike Allred covers yeah. just nailing it left and right. Let's talk a little bit. Also, the, let me just re- mention that the uh, Batman series, the entire series is on Blu-ray and DVD. You can get a great box set. Uh, let's talk about Adam West and your memories. Let's start with you, John. Yeah, well, I'm, you know, I'm around John's age, so I remember too. I grew up with Batman. This is what I, I came home to watch this stuff, you know, either in, in elementary school, middle school, high school, like you come and watch. And it was my exposure. Like, yeah, I, getting into comics was great, but I was into the Batman show before I was ever into comics. So that was my access in. And I'd read, the, you know, obviously the panels in the newspaper, but there was just so much about that show that was great and colorful. Cesar Romero was the Joker. For a Latino kid growing up, that was huge to have a guy like that play the Joker. And so for for me, it was appointment television viewing me and my brother and my sister when she got old enough. We watched it almost every time. Everything about his portrayal of Batman was your way in, right? Like, there was still shades of the darkness in certain moments, you know? Some of these plots were kind of adult-oriented. He had that poor, deluded child line he would say all the time. <laughs> you know, those things. And then you have, of course, those jokey things and him running around with a bomb. But he made it work, and that's the gift of Adam West. Something that could have been cheesy and stupid and kind of weird. He made it work because his... His warmth, his vulnerability, you to just access and connect to and follow through these crazy storylines with these crazy villains. And they brought it to life in such a vibrant way. We were talking about the Black Panther trailer having those vibrant colors when he's getting initiated on the mountain and stuff. You see that all through the all through the show of Batman. But also, if you see the documentary uh, about his life and career starring Adam West, that one was great to explore mm-hmm. his life and mm-hmm. his family, all the work he did outside. And the man was unafraid about his confidence in himself. Um, I saw him on a panel and once, and he said, 
I am Batman. I am the Batman. And <laughs> that is just like, there's a strength and power in that. And what I've always enjoyed about him is that, although he may have had trouble with it at times, you know, it, there were rumors about the drinking and all this kind of being. Shatner had that with Kirk. Spock, Nimoy mm -hmm. had that with Spock. All these guys that came through the 60s and 70s created these iconic characters have had a really hard time in the transition phase. But the birth of the geek culture that was so powerful, I think brought them that attention and adulation that they wanted and needed. And they were able to come back to these characters with a newfound appreciation. And I think we all did did that for Adam West, and I'm thankful that he was able to be appreciated again, even more so to do the um, do, the film last year, the animated film last oh, yeah. year that he voiced over. Doing which, that which as the well. second one is gonna is yet yeah. to be released. So his last yeah. release, his last theatrical release, will be as Batman, yes. and that's, that's really awesome. nice. Fighting William Shatner as two things. Yes, <laughs> I mean, it's, yes. It couldn't be better. Yeah. <laughs> what are your thoughts about Batman and Adam West? Well, uh, I'm not the same age as either John, but. <laughs> right. Growing up, she's when, a uh, lot, lot younger. <laughs> we last. Even weird. growing up when I did, Adam West was my first Batman yeah. because it's it, it's such a great portrayal because you can give it to anyone. It's a great doorway. There's, and not that there's nothing scary about, but there's nothing harmful in that, and it really portrays Batman in a heroic light. And it's not that he's not heroic anymore, but he's much more long suffering now. And that's right. hard. It's hard to give BBS to a little kid. You know, it's hard mm -hmm. to give even the dark Knight to a little kid. Right. And that's, what's going to remain special and integral about this portrayal at Adam West's work until, until the end of time, as long as Batman is around, we will remember him. And I think now it's going to make things like the next installment of the animated movie and the ongoing Batman 66 comics that much more important. They're going to mean a lot more. And, my favorite piece of fan art that I've seen on the internet is he's he's crawling up to heaven on the rope. Oh my god! And mm -hmm. then it's um it's Christopher Reeve is holding the top of it. Oh, it's one of those moments where you didn't realize how affected you were going to be by something, oh, and I got oh. I got a little verklempt. Yeah. You're getting me a little teary eyed just yeah. hearing that. Whoa. <laughs> and I watched Beware the Grey Ghost again the other day oh, as so a tribute good. to him. Yes. I cried like a baby. Yeah. It's just that scene where he's like, I. My dad and I used to watch, we were fans, and I still am. Yeah, mm. he's my hero, and he always will be. He always will be, yeah. that's it, yeah. Well, we love you, Adam West, and uh, you, you're off to a better place, and people will remember you for always, mm -hmm. for not just Batman, but your entire career, yeah. and we'd love to thank you. Thank you, Adam West. Uh, let's move on to Titans getting ready. That's right. Warner Brothers have a brand new channel. I don't even know what it's called yet. I guess it's <laughs> Warner Brothers Television, whatever they're going to call it. They're going to be launching it very soon, and they're going to have two DC series that are going to be exclusive to it with a triumphant return of the third season of the unjustly canceled animated series, Young Justice, yeah. and a live action series um, of Teen Titans simply titled Titans, as filming begins September 25th in Atlanta, Georgia. Obviously, people at DC and Warner Brothers watch our show because I've been suggesting they just call it Titans for a long time. <laughs> very long time. Um, so I'm very, very happy to hear that because we don't want, even if they are teenagers, they're going to get older. And guess what? Then you don't need to get, call it Teen Titans mm -hmm. when yeah. they're 23. So you want to just grow into it. They're Titans when they're young. They're going to get together. Jeff Johns recently stated, Titans explores one of the most popular comic book teams ever. It follows a group of young, soon-to-be superheroes recruited from every corner of the DC universe. In the action-adventure series, Dick Grayson emerges from the shadows to become the leader of a fearless band of new heroes that includes Starfire, Raven, and others. Let's talk Titans in the DC small screen universe. Mm -hmm. Ashley, as a giant Teen Titans fan, <laughs> what are your feelings about this? Now that it's actually real and they have already announced they're building sets, they're casting people, it's real, it's happening, and it's going to be in Atlanta. What are your thoughts? I've been waiting for this my entire life. This is so <laughs> great. As long as I've been wanting to be an actor, I've been wanting to be on Titans. They just announced the casting director, so please cast me on Titans. Mm -hmm. Please, please, please. And then we can all go and visit the set. It'll be so great when it happens. <laughs> I'm putting it out there. Um, I think it's interesting that they're shooting in Atlanta because they're shooting Black Lightning in Atlanta as right. well. And they have said publicly that Black Lightning is not going to be part of the, quote, um, Legends of Super, Legends of Flaro Girl verse or whatever right. we're calling that now. So if Titans and Black Lightning are part of the same universe because they're both shooting in the same city, I think that could be really interesting. Yeah. I think that I've seen a lot of naysayers about having two shows come out for this exclusive network, DC, whatever it's going to be called. Uh, the new Teen Titans with George Perez and Marv Wolfman was the number one selling comic for the better part of a decade. Mm -hmm. So there's yeah. really interesting stories to be told there. And, and I would just caution you to maybe put your doubts aside until you see it. Uh, Young Justice is wildly popular. It's so great that it's coming back. And they're doing a five-year jump, just like they did between seasons mm -hmm. one and two. And the interesting thing about that is now we're going to be moving past more of the 
best known Titans, but there are hundreds and hundreds of Teen Titans, and that's a lot of diversity that can be included, not even just in, in ethnic and ethnicity and genders, but in the universe. Right. That's a chance to build up a lot of characters that don't have the star power and could go on to be really resonant characters in the universe. And that's what I think is most exciting about that. And please cast me on Titans. <laughs> <laughs> we're, we're gonna start get Ashley on this show. We might just show up. We're gonna get a little van, we might all drive on set, and you know, we're we all will, gonna play Beast Boy's friend or something. We'll trip out there it'll be great That's right. <laughs> john roca uh i'm super excited about this you know uh, teen titans came on after i'd already you know kind of loved the other uh, uh, uh heroes in the universe so to me to kind of re-embrace the sons and essence of mm -hmm. these other uh, uh, superhero characters was fun to explore and i hosted a, a show for a long time with yuri lowenthal we did cast of characters we did over geek and sundry we did uh, you know super animation game time he was a voice on Young mm -hmm. Justice. So we interviewed Greg Weissman twice mm. and talked to him about but while this whole campaign was starting to build up steam of bringing it back, it had gone on Netflix, you know? So to me, super, super happy that these incredibly talented people are gonna get a chance to do this again because the public was so upset that it was unfairly canceled. Mm -hmm. You know, animated series come along and they get canceled and you, like, people love it and it's because they don't sell toys or whatever. Right. And so you, it breaks your heart because I love Green Lantern animated series and I it's love- It's so good. It is. It's and I so love good. Tron Uprising as well. Mm -hmm. or Tron, yeah, Tron. Like, yeah. Those were great, great. Tron Uprising. Uprising I, yeah. I was very shocked because I saw it after it had done its yeah. full run. I knew a lot of people who worked on it, and yeah. I was like, I bet it looks great, but I'm sure it's not that great. Boy, was I wrong. Yeah. It's so good. It's really fun <laughs> to be surprised. And so I hate being like, mm, I wish I knew about this when it was on. I know. You did I know. know, but you didn't watch it. I know, I know. All right. So it's like, it's, you know, it's all our faults when shows get canceled. Just got to suck it up and be like, well, maybe yeah. they could do it again. But this yeah. is cool because this is like people voted with their yes. dollars. Yes. Like they watched it on Netflix, they bought they the bought DVDs the and the Blu rays. Yeah. And, and they came out and publicly supported it, yeah, and that's yeah. really great. It shows that you can do that, but it means that if it gets canceled again, it's really not coming back because yeah. you can't bring it back on streaming, well, like, so support it when it comes out. Like right. Futurama, same yeah. thing. Yeah. yeah. Well, with Titans, I think what's going to be fun to see is who's going to be cast as what. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. I know that he says Dick Grayson, but is he's, it going to be Robin? No, is it he's going to be Nightwing. Is it going to be Nightwing? Yeah. Gonna be Nightwing? He, he has to be Nightwing. At what Nightwing. age of Nightwing are we doing? Teen. Hopefully at his sexiest. Because it's called <laughs> well, I think the reason they removed Teen is something to look at, too. Yeah. It says Titan. So they could be older. Mm -hmm. It could be you got the whole thing with Starfire. Is Starfire right. coming back? Is Raven coming back? Beast Boy definitely has to come back. It has to be on the show rather. So I wonder how the cast list is going to bring out. What characters are going to bring on to now, it? So. Nobody, yeah. nobody who's in a movie. We won't get Cyborg and we won't get Kid Flash because right, that'll right. be too much. And we right. might not even get Speedy because oh, those yeah. are all characters that are important. And they're to... not crossing over CW with this at all. I don't know because the original TNT mm, pilot, they were supposed to, they were supposed to spin Roy Harper out of that, oh, and yeah. he was going to launch Titans. I think this one is not. Mm -hmm. I don't I, know. I this personally is just me would speculating. like to see it. I would take too. place yeah. in the same universe. Yeah. They could mention things, and if we need to have Kid Flash, it's available. Yeah, yeah. And, and he's a great Kid Flash. And why not have crossovers where you like have you're like, hey, I, I'm watching this on whatever you want to call it, regular television. Yeah. I don't even know what streaming. <laughs> uh, I'm on WB Zod nine seven. And I'm, I just subscribed to four mini cable Floto channels. Yeah. This one's thirty four cents a month. I'm like, I don't know what's going on. It's too much stuff going on. So I'm like, everybody should just. I'm not like going into a one world cable universe. I like that there's all these choices yeah mm -hmm. i got netflix i got showtime because i had to watch you know twin peaks yeah i'm cool with i like i think a lot of people will pay like nine oh, yeah. bucks a month to Keeping watch it that under one ten dollars is the yeah mm -hmm. like the even five bucks but what you have to have is at least one show that people actually yeah. want to watch yeah. yes because it's like look i'm not going to go make that show but i will watch it four mm -hmm. times a month if it's awesome yeah. and i will pay five bucks yeah four They're, times a month I mean, it's like or once a month yeah that's really nominal. Like people are like, I don't have that money. Oh, you're drinking it right now. Like people go <laughs> really? waste money on a coffee or beer. True. That's like six bucks. You just drank your entire That's six subscription. bucks if you're yeah. not in LA. <laughs> right, 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 I'm just right, saying right. it's like the way sometimes people even think about mm -hmm. money, it's like you're yeah. not spending your money right. You got to get your money right to have that flavor. So yeah, we true. don't know. I'm seriously hoping that whatever the WB's you know, thing is going to be, mm -hmm. is going to be great. I mean, everyone's get on this Star Trek uh, yeah, Discovery CBS thing. All Access, yeah, CBS yeah. All Access. CBS All Access. Mm, yeah. That's a horrible name. It's going to fail <laughs> Well, DC horribly. All Access already exists, so I, well, that's exactly. not what it's going to be just, called. Yeah, it's going to be called something, but <laughs> <laughs> they better come up with some other stuff mm -hmm. besides Star Trek Discovery if they want my three dollars. <laughs> you're, you're not in for the, the good fight, whatever that good wife spin-off is. Oh, yeah, no, no. <laughs> well, let me ask you guys this. As yep. far as Teen Titans go, you got a cyborg movie that's been announced. Mm -hmm. right. And now last week, DC was very much like, well, we're going to have a wait and see attitude until after Justice League comes out. Do you think that's a smart move? Because everything I've heard is like, 
I mean, we've talked about this on our show quite yeah. a lot. Like, what is next after Justice League? Now, mm -hmm. we've heard rumblings about Man of Steel 2 for right. over five years now. Just give it to Patty Jenkins. I agree. Just I think that's a, a super <laughs> smart call. In fact, yeah. Richard Donner passed the baton to Patty Jenkins just three days ago at the DGA. Yeah. Literally wow. passing the baton. That's a big hint for all those naysayers who don't understand what that means. Google it. But uh, <laughs> I feel like the Cyborg movie is at least for me yeah. not just cuz it's a cy cyborg is like a standalone character that's usually been in in other groups like Teen Titans and then mm -hmm. Justice League mm -hmm. but I, or even a Nightwing movie I would much rather see both of those characters in a Titans film and then do a spin-off yeah. just kind of like how the way they're doing Justice League they're introducing Aquaman mm -hmm. and giving him his own spin-off mm -hmm. what are you guys thoughts about what do you think the next 3 movies after Aquaman should be after so we got Justice League we don't know what that's going to be, but Joss right. Whedon mm -hmm. is writing and directing scenes. Now, you can't take yeah. that lightly. A lot of people are like, well, look, Zach was doing a great job, and a lot of people defend BVS. Mm -hmm. A lot of people defend Suicide Squad mm -hmm. as well. Wonder Woman is a di very different movie. Man of Steel, in my opinion, yeah. is also a very different mm -hmm. movie. Those are the two movies that I really enjoy out of Me the too. four yeah, DCEU films. Yeah. And I want to and I want to love Justice League. Let's just be honest. Mm -hmm. I want that movie to make me break down like a man child crying <laughs> when the credits are rolling. <laughs> I've finally seen it. Like a thing that I wanted to see oh, ever yeah. since I saw the Super Friends. Right. I'm gonna cry it's, over the logo. Like no matter whether the movie's good or not. Right. <laughs> Ashley, I'm not that sensitive. I don't cry over logos. I it, will. I, you're not you're not getting my tears until they're earned, DC. <laughs> but what do you think is the future yeah. after Aquaman? We already know that that's being filmed. That looks like it's going to be mm -hmm. fun. I mean, I never thought, I, mean, I love saying this because it's true, I never thought a million years that if you're like, what do you think about Justice League? Well, Aquaman looks, who I never right, thought that right. would ever yeah. be the yeah. first thing that comes out. Well, Aquaman looks bad. he doesn't even have a hook hand and no, he No, he doesn't. Great. He's just like, he lo really literally looks like the dude from Game of Thrones mixed yeah. with like Conan the Barbarian, which is what Aquaman kind played. of should be. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm saying they got the best dude. So yeah. what are your thoughts? Let's start with you. Okay. After Aquaman. Well, I think for sure you've got to at some point figure out this Flash thing. Like you got it because there have been so much negative stuff, negative buzz around it. You yes. got to figure out if you're going to do it, just go ahead and do it. Dial in. I think DC is doing the smart thing here because Wonder Woman really blew the doors off everything. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And we're going to talk about that in a little bit i think and yes. it's amazing how it's done that but i think they're smart they're like look we invested in suicide we invest in bbs the, the public return wasn't always 100% great for us, so let's ride this wave. Justice League maybe does a good job. Then we've got the Aquaman movie. Okay, now can we put this thing in motion? May, I think they're going to fast-track Wonder Woman 2. Oh, I yeah. think Man of Steel, definitely the sequel is going to come out because people are upset how Superman was marginalized in BBS, and I think he's going to get a little more time to shine, hopefully, in Justice League. He better. And that may he's be what in Joss, the front of the poster on well, the lineup. Yeah. So. That may be what oh, what's that T-shirt you're wearing with. there? Yeah, that's right. That's right. Yeah. That's right. <laughs> Represent. That's what I'm saying. So it may be time. They may be focusing on that but i agree with you aquaman is the star of that trailer and i never thought i would say that because i was kind of on the fence about the casting right. but to see the way he's playing it's like that's cool man i think all of that he's stuff such a is, bro yeah you, yeah. you, need, you, need that. you needed that in this time in 2017 mm -hmm. you needed a character like that so it works I don't think Nightwing, I don't think Cyborg are going to get people in the theaters. I don't think they have that kind of following. A I think you version, underestimate the Dick Grayson fandom. I will. Yes, <laughs> I absolutely do. Because I think they should have given him one by now. Because if they green like Batgirl already, it tells you that she's ahead of, of mm -hmm. Nightwing well, in their perception. Yes and no. Remember, Chris McKay was was announced as the director of Nightwing before Batgirl. Yeah, oh, yes, you're right. So Nightwing uh, is, yeah, yeah. is in the order okay. of mm -hmm. that. They've got the thing that we're all were, were wondering. I didn't mean to cut you no, off, no, no, but no. like, what's going on with Batman? But continue. Yeah. What are your three? What are that, your three? That would be Wonder Woman 2, I think Man of Steel 2, and I think Flash. you got to figure that out because you got to erase the negative publicity of Flash. People, It's become the butt of a lot of jokes. And mm -hmm. if he comes out, if Ezra Klein right. comes out of this film Ezra looking Miller. good. Ezra Miller. Ezra Miller, sorry, comes out of this film looking good, then you want to give Ezra that shot at, mm -hmm. at really leading the Flash so franchise. before we get to year three, I wanted to say something also yeah. about Jason Momoa. It's like, uh, like, like a before they announced that he got cast as Aquaman. Yeah. I have a friend who's friends with him, and I got that little inside buzz where he's like, literally, when he got cat, you know, he was like, you know, I was like, well, what the hell's going on? He's like, he broke down. It was like, I, you know, crying, oh. like that he got the yeah. role wow. of a lifetime. That he that he finally got that recognition, mm -hmm. and so I'm so happy that That's he awesome. got that because he's proving it. Yes, it's yeah. one of those things where you're like. He didn't get to prove it with Conan the Barbarian. And when I first heard that he was playing Conan, I was like, that's He's perfect. He's not the problem with that movie. I, that's right. what I'm yeah, saying. Yeah, yeah. When I first heard that he was cast, I was like, that is the perfect casting. Mm -hmm. And I still believe yeah. that that is, is and was the perfect mm -hmm. casting. What the 
thing that was wrong with that movie was everything else. Yeah. The script, <laughs> the direction, the, everybody else who was cast, the costume right. design, everything about yeah. that movie was a literal horrible nightmare. Yeah. That, you know, I, the, the best thing you can ever do if you're a Conan fan is watch the original Conan the Barbarian with yes. Arnold and yes. then nothing else exists. Yes. <laughs> until they make a better something involving Conan. But your yeah. thoughts? What are the three after Aquaman? So I'm stealing this. Uh, this is Jason Inman's opinion, and I think it's correct. Uh, Wonder Woman was so successful so fast, and not only that, it's, it's, it's a turning point in our history. It is going to be for people what Christopher Reeve's Superman is yes. for, for people in the 70s. Uh, I don't know a better way to say that. And I think that... Old people. <laughs> I would never say that. I'm very respectful. Um, I think that... Studios are weird, and I think that corporations are weird. And I think that the reaction to this is going to be like, green light every female superhero because that's the thing that makes right. money. Oh, yeah. I know we didn't think that for 100 years, um, but it has, in fact, proven to be the case with the DCEU. So I think what I think we should see is I think we should fill out the Justice League. We should see Cyborg. We should see Flash. We should see Green Lantern mm -hmm. because Green Lantern's coming. I don't know who it is. I right. want it to be Kyle Rayner, but Green Lantern mm -hmm. is definitely coming. What I think it's going to be is I think it's going to be Batgirl, uh, Gotham City Sirens, or whatever they're going to call that oh, yeah. David Ayer movie, mm -hmm. um, and then I think it's going to be Wonder Woman too. Okay, yeah, I'll disagree with you. I'll, I'll, I'll keep cool. I'll keep Wonder Woman too, but I feel like Gotham City Sirens is going to get pushed out of the spotlight. Ooh. Oh, really? Yeah, because they have Suicide Squad too. But two. people love Harley Quinn. No, no, I know, <laughs> and I, I love Harley Quinn. I would love I would love to see mm. I would love to see all of the movies they announced, mm. which is like three hundred yeah. or something. I can't even. Remember how many there are now. I'm just like, can you just make one of them? Yeah. <laughs> can you just figure it out and stop messing around? I mean, I want to see these movies, let alone the Batman, which is like my yes. big grievance right. Right. right now. Which, uh, yes, we've announced Matt Reeves. I'm, you know, I can't help but keep clapping as the years go by as I walk towards my grave. <laughs> I would like to see the Batman happen. Um, at this point, like, look, I grew up, like I said, Adam West was my first Batman. Yep. I've seen multiple Batmans. We are all cool with recasting Batman. We would just like to see the movie yeah. sometime in the next 17 years. Do you <laughs> think that they would fast track Nightwing first and maybe make the Batman a Dick Grayson movie? Yes and no. What I think, personally, I feel like by them announcing Joss Whedon, and they, mm -hmm. like, as we all know, Joss was already on the team. Yes. He was already working on rewriting Justice League, mm -hmm. adding that flavor that only Joss Whedon can bring. Mm -hmm. And I think that was like one of the greatest gets that DC has gotten. Mm -hmm. Well, he did but, that for Marvel for a long time, too. He did reshoots on Thor. Totally. And yeah. He was part of their think tank. Yep. And it's really important to get a real sweaty, which is who Joss yeah. Whedon is. He's a total sweaty <laughs> yeah. to get him in. Like I got to see that man work on Avengers: Age of Ultron, and it was un it was unbelievable. He was already he had injured his leg, yeah. he was limping around. It was day sixty five. He wasn't even halfway through the shoot, wow. and it was literally like jumping from set to set to set, writing, rewriting, directing, and overseeing and or like orchestrating wow. what I felt was an incredible film. Mm -hmm. So like to see that he's gonna probably have a hand in that kind of orchestration, taking the baton from Zack Snyder, who's helped. You know, launch this universe. I mean, he was integral in casting Gal Gadot. I, mm -hmm. Yes. I feel like, you know, a lot of people are going to give him shade. And I'm like, look, Zach has gone through like a horrible situation yeah. that mm -hmm. no one should ever want to go through. Yeah. Yeah. And on top of that, has had to deal with like a lot of derision about his film filmmaking with BVS yeah. specifically. So And if, if nothing else, he's done wonderful casting yeah. because we yes. all agree that it's they're very well cast movies. Mm -hmm. I agree. So I feel like. What I'd like to see after Aquaman is I'll I'll take Flash out of the equation. Okay. I totally agree with you though. It's like if I could add all of them, I would be like, we're gonna have twelve movies in one <laughs> yeah, year. Totally. Yeah. One a month. Come on. You're like, why not? <laughs> that would you be could so do, great. They could do it if they ever got their shit together. Right. But like literally there'd be people lining up like, I can't wait to see this next movie next month. You could reinvigorate the actual cinemas if you did something like that. People would just be like, Can't wait to go next month. See you next month. It would be like a cool thing that everybody would get you together. You see Flash four times in a row and then you go see Cyborg Man, four times yeah. in a row. Right. Well they'd have to do that with a regular schedule. But I feel like <laughs> the Batman Man of Steel 2 and Wonder Woman 2. Yeah. Get that trinity together and have that happen in 2019. Then do a Justice League movie, subtitled Trinity, and have all those other characters in it. Nice. And in 2020, release Flash, Cyborg, yeah, and, okay. Green, and Green Lantern. And possibly feel, Aquaman 2 by then. Oh, Aquaman yeah. 2. Yeah, yeah. That's going to be in that pipeline. But I want to see the big three. Yeah. And now that we've seen Wonder Woman done right, and I've, I feel I've seen Man of Steel done right. I, I actually I think Man yeah. of Steel is yeah. a great 
origin story. It's totally different than the Donner Supermans, which is what we needed. We needed a refresher course. Yep. But guess what? He was barely Superman in the movie. He had, you know, yeah. We've talked about, we're not going to turn this into a Man of Steel review, but like, I think it was a great starting point. And then his ass got beat down and died in BVS. I thought yeah. he got shortchanged in that movie, mm -hmm. especially for the role of Superman. I would have, I wish that I would have seen a Man of Steel to a Batman and then a Batman versus Superman. But mm -hmm. because they didn't do that, that's what we have, the universe that we have set up. Guess what? You can get Matthew Vaughn on Man of Steel 2. You get Patty Jenkins back on Wonder Woman 2 or Superman. I'm cool with that. You already got Matt Reeves on the Batman. Just get it going. Yeah. I don't know. That's, that's, we're, that's our hopes. All three of us have got different versions of that. Something of those, somehow those are all going to come together. We were all there <laughs> you know, for all of the movies. That's right. And uh, this is all the Warner, Warner Brothers DC people. We're going to wait and see what the happens with Justice League. You've got Joss Whedon. Just get on it. I don't know what else to say. <laughs> I sure hope they watch now. Oh, my God. <laughs> yeah, it's like, can you please just get this shit happening? Anyway, let's get into Minor Mutations. We're just going to list off a bunch of incredible news that happened over the last week. Then we're going to pick what we want to talk about with Minor Mutations. Here we go. Number one, Wonder Woman holds on to the number one spot at the box office for the second week with a phenomenal hardly any drop at all as people just go out in droves and guess what happened who's your mummy that's right that's what wonder woman said to the mummy who's your mummy she took over number one spot dark universe is it going to fall apart because the mummy didn't make any money in america guess what it was a gigantic hit globally that's the rest of the world and that really does count and I think it's going to make enough money to validate the rest of the Dark Universe because I really want to see Bride of Frankenstein directed by Bill Condon. Number three, it's all in the family with Zendaya with, with Spider-Man Homecoming. I'm not even going to say it because it's a spoiler, but get online if you can figure out what I'm talking about. Number four, Ron Perlman and David Harbour bury the hatchet over dinner all about Hellboy, the new Hellboy, the old Hellboy. Let's all get Hellboy happening. I'm, for one, incredibly happy about seeing that movie happening because I want my Hellboy and I already got the Guillermo del Toro version. Yeah. I want to see what somebody else is going to do. Mm -hmm. And I actually want to see Guillermo's original visions. That man is a creative genius. I want to see what he's got next. Uh, number five, we've got X-Men Dark Phoenix. They want Angelina Jolie or Jessica Chastain for a specific role. Don't know what, but we'll conjecture about it. And following that information about the X-Men, the, Sh the Shire Empire is coming in X-Men Dark Phoenix through audition tapes and my own past predictions because I've been calling it for the last three years <laughs> and everybody's been denying my truth, yeah. which is just my own <laughs> stupid opinion. But uh, I was like, look, man, the Shire Empire has to be in Dark Phoenix and they're going to do Dark Phoenix. They already did it. No, they didn't. They didn't do it right. <laughs> and this is the entry point for Fox to get into the same exact universe yep. that Marvel has already claimed with Guardians of the Galaxy, mm -hmm. i.e. the Cosmic Universe universe guess what there's a ton of amazing x-men that exist in the cosmic universe let's open up that door and just as a little side note before we get into it this just added i don't know if you guys saw that inhumans trailer that got leaked. At i watched it as well I did too. <laughs> yep so okay. you know somebody leaked it i guess the guy named scott b is totally fired um because his name is just giantly <laughs> yeah, across yeah, him just yeah, like yeah. hey scott b someone got into your account meaning everyone on the planet <laughs> uh, so uh, let's let's go backwards really quick i don't want to get too much into the inhumans thing because i'm sure they're going to drop it legally like Any next week or now. tomorrow yeah. or like right now it's like it's online but without giving away too much what were your initial thoughts it's an unfinished trailer yep um i'm so happy Lockjaw's draws in it yes that's it I, oh and anson mount he's great okay i will <laughs> totally echo everything she said especially the Lockjaw part because when i was like Lockjaw, I, love Lockjaw. I screamed out Lockjaw. yeah i love Lockjaw too and he looks cool so it's like some of the other stuff has that kind of semi cheesy low production value thing that i was a little nervous about but it oh. might it might get past that I really wanted to, and I, I know it's like, oh, semi-cheesy, low production value, shot in IMAX. I don't know if that's going to matter, mm. um, but, you know, once again, this is a really rough trailer, so I don't want to be like, mm, I'm judging, you know. Exactly. But look, Lockjaw looked great. I'm, I just finished watching it just now. Okay, this right looks fantastic. I love it. It's what do got you think? That, it's got that ABC vibe. It's got that Lost kind of totally, vibe to totally. it, which mm -hmm. I like about it, too, so it's, it's something I can get invested in. And yes, Lockjaw. Oh, my God. And so <laughs> all these things are great, and you see that these are, they're existing within, within the human world, and mm -hmm. it doesn't feel out of place. Mm -hmm. And I think that's really important when you're dealing with inhumans. You don't want to make them so regal that they're untouchable. Yes. So to me, I like that they're putting them in these light, real-life situations and making it work. So and using fantastic. Maximus as the foil, which yeah. is the perfect mm -hmm. way to get mm -hmm through 
you know, and I believe we might have, I don't know if we heard Black Bolt talking, if that was telepathic, maybe he's communicating. I don't know, but so. I know the sign, I think the sign language thing is incredibly interesting. Yeah. So, and I can't wait for nerds to be doing that at conventions all over the world <laughs> next year. You know it's going to happen. <laughs> what are your thoughts on some of the other things we talked about? Wonder Woman, uh, Ron Perlman. I will Dr. never Dr. stop screaming about how great Wonder Woman is. Mm. Wonder Woman is so great. If you haven't seen it, what are you doing with your life? Uh, go see it right now. Yeah. I've seen it twice, going on three times. Um, the Mummy is not going to kill that the Dark Universe, which there's a rumor that WB is suing them because they right. own Dark Universe, which I think is slightly hilarious. Um, they do. They, I mean, their, their comic book titles, Batman is in the Dark, dark Universe, universe yeah, right yeah. now. So. So we'll, we'll see how far that gets. But there's so many other announcements from the Dark Universe that I'm interested in. I didn't go see The Mummy, and I... I'm not going to go see the mummy, uh, but I think yeah. the potential there is so great. So I, I, I hope it, it. I think it already has made enough money internationally, but I hope it makes enough money that we get to see things like Brighter Frankenstein right. um, and the creature from the Black Lagoon. Like, totally. What? <laughs> yeah. That's so cool. Well, you know, I'll add this. Uh, Bloomhouse has recently made a deal, like where they were talking about taking on a couple of these dark universe characters, mm -hmm. and we know Bloomhouse do deals with like lower budgets, which I'm totally fine with. Why I think. Not? I think Creature from the Black Lagoon, Hunchback, uh, mm -hmm. you know, uh, the Phantom of the Opera, done on a lower scale budget, as in like $10 million. I mean, I'm not talking about like $3 yeah. and a pack of chicken. Let's go make a movie. You know, $10 million is nothing to sneeze at. People are like, hey, it's a real cheap movie. It's $10 million. Where's your $10 million? I'd love $10 million. <laughs> I would like to have $10 million. I'd like $1 million to make a really kick-ass superhero movie. I could do it. So when I see, oh, you got $10 million to make that movie, I'm expecting to see yeah. something a little bit more than, oh, they're in this house for the whole movie. Where did the yeah. 10 million go on? What kind of drugs were you on? Because they must have been good. I mean, they made Get Out for five. Yes. Yeah. So. It's certainly possible. And it's a great, mm -hmm. really fun film. So I would love to see that approach taken. Mm -hmm. And yeah, definitely Bride of Frankenstein is one of those movies that like, mm -hmm. yo, give that movie the 50 million that it needs. Angelina Jolie's rumored for that as well, that they're yeah. going I after her I want to see that. that. What are your guys' thoughts about the Shi'ar Empire? Am I saying it right? Shi'ar or yeah, Shi'ar? I've always heard Shi'ar. Okay, yeah. so Shi'ar Empire, like I personally have obviously been wanting that to happen. Yeah. Hopefully it's not just a rumor. Mm -hmm. But what are your thoughts of that being brought well, into the Dark Phoenix universe? It makes sense because the rumor is that she might be playing Princess Majestrix Lalandra Normani. So yeah. yes. if she's yeah. playing Lalandra, who has issues with Dark Phoenix, not Jean Grey, Dark Phoenix, mm -hmm. then you bring the Shi'ar Empire. In, so then it all makes sense and you make it work and you make and you have an awesome villain, right. especially if Jolie's going to embrace playing a villain again, which she kind of was and wanted. So right. whenever she plays those kind of darker characters, she's always the best at them. Mm -hmm. And so for me, this is this speaks perfectly to her. Chastain would be nice as well. I think Chastain would be on the line of like she's with been that, trying to be a superhero for a long time. Right, as well. right, right. right. Well, like with Sovereign, that, that the actress who played the Sovereign, the head of the mm -hmm. Sovereign in mm -hmm. Guardians, it'd be more of that. But with J Jolie, there's always that darkness underneath. Oh, and, and you also what I love about her Jolie is that, and McAvoy teaming back yes. up from Wanted yeah. because yeah, yeah, yeah. you know Lalandra and uh, Professor X get busy, yep. and that's probably going to happen in this. What are yeah, your he thoughts? He gets around a lot, he Professor does. X. Does. <laughs> He's a busy man. He's a smooth brother. Um, I, I'm not super into the Dark Phoenix saga, so I'm not particularly enthused Ooh. that it's coming back right. to okay. the universe. But if you you take it to that cosmic -y level, which nobody has dared to do with the X-Men yet, Correct. that could be really exciting. And like you said, having something that competes with Guardians of the Galaxy in a sphere where no one else is doing right. that opens up an interesting possibility for the X-Men franchise, which seems like it might be on its way out. Well, yeah. see, I'm glad you even brought that up because my point is Deadpool comedy, New Mutants horror film, X-Men Dark Phoenix science fiction. Oh, right? nice. So I feel like that's I a it's personally, a I feel that's a great progression because like, Marvel's doing the superhero thing and they got that on lock. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. DC is like kind of fumbling around like, we're trying to catch up, uh, announcing 400 movies. We, I desperately want them to just not only succeed and catch up, but be on the same par, mm -hmm. which yeah. they deserve to be. They're, all their characters in the comic books, some of them not only are older than the Marvel characters, but are done better than the Marvel I characters. I agree, yeah. So, I mean, it's about time that the cinematic universe catches up Get all the talented people that you can and get that happening. Yeah. Um, but this seems like the Fox people are getting their their ducks in a row. Mm -hmm. yeah. And it's like, look, you know, we might not be doing Fantastic Four, right? Because you're not. <laughs> um, but everything that you've been doing X-Men wise, I, as a, as a nerd, yeah. totally dig. Mm -hmm. So yeah. that they're doing these three movies next year. And I'm like, man, I get that comedy. I get that horror movie. And I get that science fiction from all these characters that I've loved as, in the comic books. I think that's a home run, fantastic style. Yeah. Any, any last thoughts on yeah, any of this stuff? Yeah, I saw The Mummy. 
it's not good. And, you know, first 20 minutes, you, you're like, oh, this could be good. And then it just goes off a cliff, unfortunately. So, But I think they are making it up internationally. So hopefully they do that. I would like to see Blumhouse tackle League of Extraordinary Gentlemen. Oh, dude. I would love another shot at that because they, they, they really fumbled the ball. And I love that graphic novel from Alan Moore. So I would love to see that, more dedication to that. So I don't think the universe is dead. I think people want to see that. Bright, people, uh, Bright Frank's name, people really want to see that. Um, the Wonder Woman thing, go to Forbes and read Scott Mendelson's article. It's fantastic how much he breaks down all the way back to the 1980s almost what how this how this minimal drop off means what this minimal yep. drop off right. means for the legs of Wonder Woman mm -hmm. how amazing of an accomplishment it is for at the time that it is and the Zendaya stuff once you read the spoiler, it will make uh, certain characters' words in the trailer have a little more weight to them, and you wonder what the connection is going to be with Peter Parker. Don't watch the international trailer yeah, to right, Spider-Man: right, right. Homecoming because it really gives away the entire movie. Right. Well, <laughs> let me add this: like they, uh, why we're not talking about the 22-minute behind-the-scenes Spider-Man yeah, thing yeah. that oh, they released yeah. is just because I don't want to talk about yep. it, and I feel like. Any sweaty who's watching this show is already going to see Spider-Man Homecoming. Oh, yeah. Like, yeah. I, I highly advise, just stop watching the trailers. It's coming out in, like, less than a month. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You're keep doing that. Like, I don't have a Wonder watch Woman, on, but... Wonder Woman is going to be number one until Spider-Man comes out. Ooh. Yeah, in fact, I'm glad you said that, because I think, I think this weekend it's going to beat Cars 3. Uh, I mean, I a lot of people so. are like, oh, Cars 3 is going to make a ton of money. Not really. Wait a minute. Transformers is coming out. Not so this weekend. Transformers is going to... Before... Internationally. Before. Uh, internationally it will, but I think Wonder Woman will hold it domestically. That's right. I, for, I mean, forgot we got a Transformers guy here. You, wait, you think Wonder Woman's going to be Transformers the weekend it comes out in I two do. weeks? You're out of your mind. Transformers right. that, I hope that for Wonder humanity. Go right. see Wonder that's Woman. Fair. Well, that's fair. I'll, I'm going to have to side that, with that, Captain that's Trivia a, that's here. That's a good point. You've made a I fair think point. I think it's a fair, fair point. Like, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to see... What is it? Transformers 6? Is it the sixth one? Fifth. It's oh, the fifth second one. King Arthur movie this year. I know. Right. It, it'll probably be the second <laughs> King be Arthur one. failure this no, year as well. It. Stop it. I know. I really I do want Transformers <laughs> 5 know. to not suck. So I'm going to gonna go see it, it, but I'm going to see it drunk. Yeah. Uh, you know what? <laughs> this, 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 the last, best way to see it. this is the last week that you guys can support my crazy Kickstarter. I'm trying to make this weird poetry book. Do I've been it. working on it for 25 years. It's called Isolated Mutations of the Assembly Line Baby Son <laughs> by John Schnell. That's right. That's me. I was, I've been writing it for years. I was like, you know what? This year, I'm going to try to just make it. What's the best way to try to make it? Get my friends to help me make it. Mm -hmm. So you can go ahead, go online, go to Kickstarter right now, contribute some money. You can get your name in the credits. You can buy some of my original art that I'm going to have at San Diego Comic-Con. If you're going to be there, you can get the Early Bird Art Special. Help support it. It's in the last week. We're almost there. We've just crossed the uh, two-thirds mark. So we're... Ooh. It's chugging along, especially for a very weird book. I'm happy with the support, so I want to thank you. Pre-thank you right now, but try and see if you can help out. It's a couple, maybe about 50 more people. If you all pitch in, get a book, I'll be able to make it and print it. So that's it for me and Isolated Mutations. Let's get into Twitter questions. Wow. Uh, number one is Sean Clary. Uh, asks, is Batman the most versatile comic book movie anime character seeing how different incarnations are end of sentence? Um, <laughs> no. Yes and no. Ooh. What are your thoughts? Uh, I think I don't think Batman is the most versatile. I just if you are looking at all of the comic book characters, even just like the seven Justice Leaguers, objectively, mm -hmm. I think he's not. I think he's the most popular character. I think he sells the most, and that's why he's gotten the most in incarnations. And I think over his uh, eight, almost eighty years, uh, Superman will be at eighty in two years, mm -hmm. something like that. Eighty years of history. Um, he's had the most opportunity for exposure, and that's why you think he's a more diverse character than somebody like. Wonder Woman, because if you look, Batman has more adaptations than any other character. So that's why, that's why you think that. <laughs> what do you think? I d I say yes. He is the most versatile because get out of town, John Boca. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I, I there's nothing against Wonder Woman. No, I just love Wonder Woman. I just I, I think uh, Batman is what I grew up. Gotham by Gaslight, Batman twenty forty nine. Mm, sure. like, uh, there's so many different versions of him. Brave and Bold. When you see animated, there's so many. Even uh, uh, Adam West Batman, right? You see these different types of Batman, and there's a reason for that because he is the Dark Knight, and the darkness we can put our own thoughts into the darkness, and right. so he can come into so many different iterations yeah, even with the killing joke they added that extra stuff the stuff with Damian Wayne that's going on now like there's so much to play with with him that I think there's a reason for that and it's because we find pieces of his personality that, that speak to us that we connect to and when we see it in different places we love the way it works I mean Gotham by Gaslight is one of these graphic novels people don't talk about enough right and actually they just came out with a collection of Mike Mignola's art yeah. like a hardcover and that's one of them that yeah. they collected it's all of his different like Elseworld world yeah. Yeah. stuff yeah exactly world of Krypton mm -hmm. and yeah. just a bunch of different I love his artwork you're betraying your t-shirt John 
Oh no! Yeah. no. <laughs> Superman, don't get me wrong, but you he's know, the big blue boy scout. Yeah. I'm I'm gonna agree with the the question. I do feel that Batman is one of the most diverse. Is he the most versatile characters? Mm. I would have to edge towards yes than no, simply because of all the different interpretations and why he's so versatile is because not only is he a human being, which we are all human, mm -hmm. all these tales of gods and monsters mm -hmm. and things like that, they're really fun. I love reading about mutants and creatures, especially when they're imbued with our own sensibilities, our, our own stories or tribulations yeah. that we have to go through. But it's like, you know, superhero comics are like a modern soap opera. For those of us who don't want to watch a soap opera and would rather watch like giant mutant creatures float around and question reality. <laughs> and Some of us existence. just need a little more violence. Yeah, <laughs> or, you know, or crazy cool costumes. Some of us need that flavor and that's why we're here. But you know what, Batman has that psychological edge and that's one of the reasons I have always been drawn to him. And you can have have the Adam West, the light, goofy, mm -hmm. all right, chum, let's go. And you can also have this super dark, troubled yeah. person who's brooding about his parents' murder. So you have this incredibly diverse character who can be told from any writing standpoint. So any writer who has a story they want to tell, they can adapt and use Batman to tell it. Yeah. So it's a, that's to me is why it's less so even the character and more so the diversity that that, that character, the blank slate mm -hmm. within the, you know, he's got this, you know, story mm -hmm. that's basically you can go real tragic yeah. or real heroic and it runs the gamut so I feel almost all the characters I mean Superman Wonder Woman I mean Woman. That, that would be my my argument is that I think you can do that with all the characters mm -hmm. given the right opportunity and I don't think characters like Aquaman for example have had the same opportunities that Batman has had because the, you can show great darkness in that character if you look at the 1990s run where he had the hook hand or mm -hmm. when he founded the JLA right. and you can see a lot of silliness and a lot of levity and then the current run in Rebirth <laughs> is I think a nice balance between the two I just think Batman's had the most opportunity and that is is because he's one of the easiest characters to see ourselves in. Yeah. yeah. Well, so I feel like the question is valid. I feel mm -hmm. at this point mm -hmm. right now, Batman is the most versatile because he's gotten all of those chances mm -hmm. and the character is literally still ripe with opportunity. Yes. Like if you yeah. don't like the run that Batman is on right now, wait two years, yeah. wait five mm -hmm. months, because there's some other writer with a story to tell and they want to tell it using that character He's Batman. also in about seven titles, so you'll find some incarnation <laughs> that That's you right. like. That's right, if you don't like this Batman, you might, like, the, Batman. You might like Batman 66. So uh, let's move on. Chris Swan asks, who knows the evil that lurks in the hearts of men? <laughs> the shadow knows. What do you think of a shadow Netflix series? Well, Chris Swan, I would love to see that. I would love to see a shadow series, but my personal feeling is I want to see it updated. Mm -hmm. I want to see the shadow in 2018. If they did it next year, I don't want to go into the thirties or the forties. I don't want to see the, I love the shadow movie parts of it. Mm -hmm. The yeah. Alec Baldwin movie. Some of it really works. Mm -hmm. Some of it really doesn't work. Yes. Uh, <laughs> a lot of it does, really doesn't work, but let, let's be honest. Like, you know, there was a lot of movies that came out in the nineties. Mm -hmm. The weird, we weren't in the golden world that we live in now, like the golden no. era of all television and streaming mm -hmm. and movies. And like, I mean, like we are lucky. And I love to say that for people who don't understand just how lucky you are. Mm -hmm. You're watching a show called Heroes and that's all we talk about. This yeah. didn't even exist. YouTube wasn't even around. Nothing of the, nothing existed. The planet didn't exist. We'd be making cassette tapes to yeah. hand out at the comic That's book right. shop. right. <laughs> yeah, these like weird magnetic, the shadow, you know, like tapes you had to listen to. It wasn't that long ago, but literally <laughs> back in the old days when me and Roku were walking around with canes. That's right. Uh, the shadow came out. And there was literally like one movie. It was like the shadow and the phantom. The phantom. Oh. Smash evil. Get out of here. I don't like that movie either. But no, it's terrible. look, you, there was a real lot of choices. Like you mentioned yeah. the League of Extraordinary Gentlemen. <gasps> I had to look forward to that because that was the only other superhero. I think it came out in 1999. Yeah, 2000. The 2000. Because yeah, yeah, yeah. Ian McKellen turned that movie down yeah. to do Lord of the Rings. Yeah. Well, Ian Smart McKellen was so. probably very smart <laughs> <laughs> because Sean Connery quit the business yeah. after yeah, that yeah. movie. That tells you, you something. Would yeah. you want to see an animated version of The Shadow or would you rather see a live action? I want to see live action. Live action, personally. yeah. Yeah, I, I was a massive fan uh, from Orson Welles. Definitely, because mm -hmm. I'm growing up, he was my I, he was my idol, and so I would listen to his Mercury Radio oh, yeah. productions of the Shadow stuff. And then I got into the late run from the '80s and the '90s nice. when Sinkevich was doing the the, uh, uh, the covers. Oh yeah, and so all of that was Andy great Helfer was it was Howard Shakin did a, a four issue mm -hmm. run. Yep, four issue run. Andy Helfer came on to write, and Bill Sinkevich drew it too. Yes. For several issues, and Andy Helfer and uh, Kyle Baker. Kyle Baker. Who also, right. a lot of people didn't because Kyle Baker's cartoony style just wasn't in vogue at that moment. Right. So it still like, works for that. It does. Title, though. It but does. that's what I mean. That's what uh, the history of comics can give you if you yeah. go back and be like, not just the Howard Shaken run, which was like the revitalization. It came out in the same 
year, I believe in the same month that The Dark Knight came out. Because yeah. I remember I bought both of them. I was like, oh my God, this is incredible. Yeah. Look at the diversity of holding yeah. my hands. Well, it's <laughs> totally. So. That, that and The Question. Those two yes. were my, they, mm -hmm. and then Spectre came just a little bit before. Yeah. Those, those All three very were the similar, ones. That, yeah. yeah, and they took me out of this whole idea of just these kinds of superheroes. Yes. They broad my mind. So it's for me, the shadow was great. Lamont Cranston, all that, what he was doing, in there, it was so much fun to explore that world. So yeah, I would agree with you. I, modern adaptation, even if maybe he's somehow stuck in a, in another time right. in the modern world, how yeah, that would yeah, play yeah. out, you know? Well, I mean, like right now, I believe it's Dynamite holds the rights to the comic oh, book yeah. version so, yeah. of the Shadow. Mm -hmm. They've done a couple issues that I really liked, a couple that I really didn't. So mm -hmm. it's like it's a lot of hit and miss with yeah. me and Dynamite. So. I think The Shadow is a very great character, and I would love to see, if it's not Netflix, another streaming service, snap that up. What are your yeah. You could definitely do it on a streaming budget. I think it lends itself to that in a way that, like, The Flash obviously doesn't. Mm. Definitely, so definitely, definitely. Um, next question is Brian Yetman asks, when Superman is revealed in Just League, think they, do you think they should play the original John Williams theme? Wouldn't it be epic? Thoughts? Well, Brian... <laughs> um, I don't know. I actually liked Hans Zimmer's mm -hmm. Superman theme. I, I really like that new Superman yeah. theme. I mean, it really grew on me, especially after the movie came out. And, like, you know, they've got all these, you know, Spotify. I was like, oh, some nerd put together this really cool mix. Yeah. I listen yeah. to that all the time. I was like, thank you, nerd, for, like, making this cool <laughs> Hans Zimmer super mix. And it's like, man, I mean, you know, look, Hans Zimmer, say what you will about his spy amazing Spider-Man 2 uh, soundtrack. The man is a genius. Mm -hmm. The man did The Dark Knight. The mm -hmm. man is an incredible musical score yeah. I mean like look I mean like him and uh, Howard Shore are some of my I favorite musical mm -hmm. scores and Howard Shore goes from super experimental like Cronenberg's movies which I think all of you should get all the soundtracks to any of David Cronenberg's didn't, didn't movies didn't he start on The Fly? he did no it was yeah. even before that so wow. it was before The Fly it was, I believe he did uh well, existence is after the fly. Yes. Maybe Ashley's right. I don't have my. I don't have I'm my sure. sky. You better Google that. I could, I could so. look it up on my computer, yeah. but I won't. Well, go ahead, John. I think it'd be confusing, uh, John and Ashley, if we mm -hmm. heard John Williams' score because what we've come because this is not John Williams' Superman. Right. John, yeah. This is Hans, Hans Zimmer's Superman, and. To be honest with you, you guys are completely right. I, I it is the only soundtrack that is on my workout mix that is not you a rocky soundtrack. Got to get that Wonder Woman score though. Well, no, that's good too. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But but, I, but this one I can't even play it in the car because mm -hmm. I get emotional if I'm driving, yeah. and it, especially the the scene when he's discovering his powers for the first time. When that score hits, on I get real real emotional. So to me, no, it's got to be the Hans Zimmer score. I think you take us out of it if you play the John Williams score. I agree, but I look forward to the fan edit of that after that movie yeah, comes out because I'll watch that. <laughs> wow, well, I think uh, I was looking up. I was looking up his score. He did uh, M Butterfly. Oh, M Butterfly. <laughs> <laughs> that glass. Wait, is that is that he did? Is that uh, he did Butterfly? Ed Wood. No, okay. that's a uh, you know. There's a lot of other ones that he did. I don't okay. see. The, I don't know if he did the fly. Maybe not. I thought Howard Stern did. Sorry. I don't see it on here. But Zimmer's but, uh, fantastic. Zimmer, so he did. Oh, Did he? I'm looking okay. at uh, I'm looking at IMDb. Right. Anyway, I shouldn't be wasting my time with this IMDb <laughs> stuff. I'm trying to run a show. Um, so you don't think yes. it would be epic? What's if John Williams' score was? It, it would kind of take it, away. Don't you I think? feel I personally feel like look Howard Zimmer. I mean, now it's Howard, Howard Zimmer, Zimmer. <laughs> and Hans that Shore. amazing artist, that hot yeah. new yeah. conductor. That's totally the super combo mix that I really want to hear. Um, I would like to see I would like to see Zimmer's soundtrack used yeah. because I feel that's that's right. And and uh, John Williams' score is fantastic, but if it, it it's, it's from another time. Yeah. Yep. And I feel like that's where it, it should always be played and you should always listen to it and you should remember Christopher Reeve as yeah. Superman. Mm -hmm. um, let's move on to uh, Andrew Middlemiss asks, if Thor Ragnarok is a critical or commercial success, could Marvel's Hercules possibly see light in phase four? Ashley, what are your thoughts? Ooh, Hercules is a tough sell, <laughs> my friend. Uh, it's also confusing because Disney uh, owns Hercules. They have right. a brand on that, and since they're all under that same uh, mouse-eared umbrella, I don't think it's likely. Also, Hercules is one of those characters that there's a Hercules in the DC universe, mm -hmm. and since Wonder Woman did come out so strong with such ties to Greek mythology, I think I think it's unlikely. I think you're more likely to finally get a Hulk movie. Right, yeah. Uh, and I think there are other characters that will be appearing in that that you're more likely to get before Hercules. I don't, I, I, I don't think so. It'd be great if they did. I'd be there. I would, I would like to see Hercules. I would like to see the the Stanley Jack Kirby Hercules mm -hmm. brought in. Yeah. I don't know what's going to be happening with Asgard. Looks like Hela's got her own plans. <laughs> yeah, really. So we really, I really don't know what's what is Phase Four like an empty void with Thanos just laughing. I don't know what, <laughs> I don't know what we've got coming up. Franklin so. shows up and puts them all in a pocket universe. I know. Frank Langella <laughs> floats up as Skeletor. What's 
what's up? You know, who knows? I don't know what's going to be happening. What are your thoughts? <laughs> okay, so uh, I agree with Ashley. As much as I want to come back and say, you underestimate the Hercules bandwagon, but no, there is not really a fanboy base <laughs> for Hercules. So, But I loved him when he had his run on the Avengers. He yes. was one of my favorite guys. When they teamed him up with Amadeus Cho. Yes. That was great. I yep. love that stuff. And I also am a, I'm a mark for Wonder Man. I would like to be one. I would like Wonder Man to be Simon one. Williams. Yeah, Simon Williams. That would be one to play with. But Hercules, I think you're absolutely right, Ashley. I think we've got Wonder Woman out, the Greek mythology, all of that is there. If Asgard, other, and I really, really doubt they'll play that out in that way. But I love that character. So if mm-hmm. it happened, great. But yeah. I'd be really surprised if it did. Yeah, and if I think if it happened, it would be in a team. Yeah, I don't know if yes. it would be yeah. like a Hercules sure. movie. It might be like, well, you know, here's this other dude who showed up. He calls himself Hercules. Yeah. You know, it's like, yeah. who knows how they would introduce him? But put him on New Avengers or yeah. I, want, I want the beard and I want the pseudo later hosen. I, mean, <laughs> really? I want it all. If you're gonna be Hercules, nice. be Hercules. Oh man! All right, well let's uh, let's go for some uh, some Twitter questions, uh, live Twitter questions. I'm gonna be rocking through. We're gonna answer them really quick. Woo. I'm just gonna say, Amy Awesome says no on Hercules. Yes on Hulk. Duh. That's right. <laughs> yeah. Where's the Hulk standalone movie? Well, we're gonna get it sort of. It's called Thor Ragnarok because Hulk's in it, and it's Planet Hulk. Basically, we've been talking about Planet Hulk yeah. forever, and that's what we're getting, a cool combo. Uh, Mike Schneider asks, will DC's upcoming platform be transmedia, i.e. two premiere series, older TV movies, unlimited back issues? Boy, I love, that, I love that you said that, <laughs> and I think that would be a fantastic idea because that's the wave of the future. Transmedia is like, if you don't know what that means, it means all media kind of focused in, especially online. You're on your phone. You could like watch a movie. Mm-hmm. You could read a comic book. I think that's incredibly smart. And if DC, if anybody from the executive suite of DC All Access Volume 7, HB5, whatever your <laughs> channel is called, get that transmedia nugget in there. Get the comic books as yeah. part of your monthly flavor because then you're going to get all of us. And you'll destroy yep. Marvel Unlimited. Ooh, that's <laughs> yeah. right. Right, right. We, we want everyone to be friends. No destruction. What are your no, thoughts? no, no. I agree completely. I think that's the way of the future. You have to be one step ahead of what people want yes. and they don't even know they want yet. You presented that, people went insane for it. So yep. I think it's good. And we as 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 consumers of this media, we just want everything at our fingertips now. You know, yes. we're becoming the wall E people. That's just how life's going to go. So we might as well accept it. We might as well just accept Hang it. Hang on a second, Rogan. Oh, where's my floaty it? chair? Yeah, where's the, where's I don't want to be like some slab-like dude floating with a giant Slurpee. <laughs> Relax. I'm, I'm losing weight. I'm what are you trying to do here? I want that little robot, They'll still though. be gyms. They'll just be connected to the treadmill. Roka so just wants to be on some kind of slab with a Slurpee. You heard it here, folks. <laughs> He's going to be like, I'm Captain Trivia, like floating around. He's got his little He's mask, mask on. on <laughs> Come on. The, the fat law. The yeah. fat law. Oh, Look, my man. God. That's so funny. Uh, <laughs> all right, so... <laughs> Derek Spicer asks, do you think DC will give us a definitive movie slate at Comic-Con? Maybe. Ashley. Yeah? <laughs> Maybe. You know what? I think, I think you know what? I think they're going to do it. I, feel I hope like, so. I feel like that's the place yeah. to do it. And like, if they're a little hemming and hawing right now and they're like, well, we're not so sure. I think it's because they were blown away mm-hmm. at the reaction that Wonder Woman has gotten globally. I not just so. in the States, but globally. Mm-hmm. The incredible positive reaction. Mm-hmm. I think they were blown away. Mm-hmm. And I feel like they're like, we need to regroup and rethink this. We don't even know. We don't have a statement prepared. But they also might not be parsing it out in the way that we traditionally think of as phases. Right. For them, it might be like a roving continuity the way that comics are. Sure. Um, and that can be, I think, a little trickier to present. But it would be great if we just got like a nice uh, Excel spreadsheet with all the titles, all the stars, all the directors, and then all the releases. And I want it to be co- t- subtitled roving continuity. There you go, yeah. Because <laughs> uh, I, I actually agree with you. And I think that that perspective, I think they're like, look, we, we're blown away by the perspective let's get all our ducks in a row mm-hmm. let's get our signatures signed get yep. patty jenkins and gal gadot get all these people yep. godot sorry it's always hard to say your name right mm. it's godot godot right G- godot. You gotta pronounce yeah. that t godot. um get them on board yep. get the batman get a date for it plant the flag and say it at comic-con with with pride and determination no. and non-floatiness because none of us are, we've been floating for several years mm-hmm. now with this we don't know what's happening floatiness Let's plant the flags. <laughs> when is it coming out? What year is it coming out? So that all of us nerds can actually be like, mm, I can't wait for this movie to come out. When? Well, I don't know. All Figure next it out. year, John already told you how to do it. John, one every month. John gets real mad if you put maybe on your invite. He gets, he's one of those two. Either you're coming or you're not coming. Don't yeah. give me a baby. Yeah, none of this maybe stuff, DC. I want a flag planted at, at Comic-Con. It better happen. Uh, Blurred Dreams asks, will we ever see a Nazi Spider-Man on the big screen interacting with Black Panther, possibly in Wakanda? I think you're way more likely to get Miles Morales, and I'm going to keep saying it. They cast Abraham Atta from Beasts of No Nations. He's 14. If you don't make him Miles, you're 
You're missing a giant opportunity. Mm. I think you're way more likely to see Miles than a Nazi Spider-Man. That'd be great. Right. But yeah. also, does the, the question with all the spider characters is, does Marvel own that? And now that they're setting, uh, now mm. that Sony ugh, Studios is all is setting up their Spider-Man without Spider-Man universe, right. I think that's the universe to look for mm. other spiders to creep up in. Sure. Because like, they've shipped Peter off to Marvel now. Yeah. Well, I mean, you know, I feel like like Sony's playing a really interesting game, and I feel like mm -hmm. it's the long game that none of us are aware of because they're not announcing stuff. Yes. Just like Spider-Man just crept into Marvel after almost everybody was like, there's no way ever that Spider-Man will ever, ever be in the what? Uh, no, he's <laughs> in the I Avengers. I think that on this show before yeah, it was no, it, Yeah, it's like there's a lot of people who are like, it's never going to happen. And guess what it happened? Yeah. Why? Because that's what it's all about. We forget because we're fans, but the it's about business. Mm -hmm. And good business is like, look, people want to see Spider-Man as part of the Marvel Universe. And in fact, people want to see all of the Marvel Universe be part of the Marvel Universe because that's what these soap operas are, is the interconnectivity of it. And that's why we see the thriving world of the Marvel Cinematic Universe because they are interconnecting everything. Black Panther can stand alone. Doctor Strange can stand alone. Yeah. But Thor might show up in it. Or they, we, have these, yeah. we have these like ongoing storylines that we're watching as a larger type of a soap opera. That's what we really want to see with a movie like Spider-Man Homecoming to see that Iron Man is involved in it and there's Captain America being referenced just in those trailers was enough to be like, that's satisfying, but yet it's a Spider-Man film. Mm -hmm. I feel like Venom and all these other Tom movies, Hardy. Silver, Silver and Black, all these other films that they've announced, I think are going to be in some way, shape or form, Peter Parker is gonna be part of that universe and so is the Marvel universe. Mm -hmm. I feel that there is a back door that has been, is being negotiated and Miles Morales is gonna be playing a giant part of the Sony mm -hmm. universe. Yeah. He is the lead in their animated film and yeah. from what I'm hearing from all my animated mm -hmm. friends is that it's fantastic and that you've never seen anything like this before. Mm -hmm. It's gonna break the boundaries of what we're used to seeing as far as an animated movie that's done in a comic book style way. Mm -hmm. I cannot wait wow. to be able to share all this with everybody. Mm -hmm. What are your thoughts? Um, I also secretly hope that when S Marvel has to give something to Sony for Spider-Man, and I secretly hope that they give them the Defenders mm. so that we can get a oh. scene with Spider-Man and Daredevil because yeah. uh, Marvel's doing a good job right now, um, which they learned from DC, of, of keeping their TV and their movie universes separate, and mm. that might be a way to tangentially tie everything together sure. and not worry about having the Defenders show up next to the Avengers. I agree. Well, we've seen it negotiated, so it's certainly possible. And you're right; it's about business, right? Mm -hmm. If you can make, if Spider-Man: Homecoming comes out and knocks it out of the park, makes that money, it the rising will. tide lifts <laughs> all boats. So you want you want to have a piece of that money yeah. going both ways. Mm -hmm. So that's the thing, and I think there will be exchanges talked about, right? Right. You help us; we helped you help us. That's, that's just yeah. how it works. Exactly you know? yeah. what Fox is doing, because yeah. I know that they gave Fantastic Four back to Marvel. That just makes sense. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that. Fox can have that X-Men flavor. They yep. want to have video games. They want to have toys. Face for the yeah. Fantastic Four. It's, it's going to happen. <laughs> it's going to happen. We're very confident about that. The sweaty question of the week comes from Jody Money. Just some Friday sweaty. <laughs> it's time for Granny Goodness to come up. That's right. Uh, Jack Kirby's Granny Goodness from the New World. Uh, the Fourth World. Sorry. The Fourth World. The New Gods. Yeah, the New Gods. Yes. Um, if you don't know who Granny Goodness is, Google search her. For God's sakes. Yeah. Watch the Please. Justice League animated yes. series. <laughs> You'll see her in the animated world. I feel like you're going to see some Granny Goodness coming very soon because we've got Mother Boxes, and that's the mm -hmm. main storyline of the Justice League. I mean, Zack Snyder, they've introduced the Parademons in Batman v Superman, so we literally have already opened the door to Orion and mm -hmm. all the new gods. Yeah. And I feel like that cosmic world is part of a larger origin story, which will involve... Uh, Man of Steel, which mm -hmm. will involve Wonder Woman. It's gonna a larger piece of that puzzle will be revealed in Just League. Mm -hmm. What are your guys' thoughts about not just Granny Goodness, mm -hmm. but the new gods in general? Well, I love the idea of Granny Goodness if they're gonna bring it. Because I mean, she. It's great to give Supergirl more like villains to play with. I mean, she's in charge. Who are of the not female, Superman or not, villains? Or maybe, right. Yeah, <laughs> she's not, yeah, right. Uh, uh, the female Furies, right? She's in charge of the female yep. Furies. Mm -hmm. yep. She raised Scott Freed as if Mr. Miracle could play yep. around. Big Barda is a possibility oh, now. I want Big Barda I, in that I, show. I do too. Played by Lucy Lawless. <laughs> Big Barda is one of those characters that should have been a, should have appeared by now yeah. in, in many different forms. I love her to pieces, and I love and I collected that when they when it was Mr. Miracle and Barda when they had that offshoot during the. J.M. Dematis run sure. of Justice League. She's Those in the, the new best. Mr. Miracle series as well. Yeah, and yeah. Uh, uh, somebody told me about it. Said it's fantastic, and I got to mm -hmm. get it. So I'm gonna I'm gonna pick that up. So to me, these are the things that I want to see happen. So absolutely, Granny Goodness would be great. Connection to Apocalypse, all that stuff just would be fantastic. Let me just give a little quick plug to Bug, 
which is uh, oh, from yeah. the Young Animal series. It's fantastic. Also in the same universe. Yeah, also Mike Allred. So uh, your thoughts on Granny Goodness? I would love to see her and more of the fourth world in Supergirl. Yeah. I think it would be an interesting way to expand that universe that doesn't tread. We're always in danger with Supergirl now that Harry Superman is there of treading on what the DCEU mm. is doing. And that would be a way, because I, I mean, yeah, we have the fourth world there, but I don't think we're going to get a character like Granny Goodness on screen in, in the movies. And Orion is traditionally a character, well, not traditionally, but in the New 52 run, he had a lot of involvement with Wonder Woman. Yes. And it would be interesting to see that relationship transplanted to Supergirl. Mm -hmm. uh, and then since we shipped Monel off into the ether, I think he would be an, a great male replacement that you could uh, have on the show. And they're new gods, so you can cast whoever you want. Yeah, that's, that's true. true. And I, I definitely want to see uh, Scott Free and Big Barda yes. show up. Either in the TV universe or the movie universe. Either or. <laughs> I really feel like DC, like maybe once they get their ducks in a row, can announce a New Gods movie. And like I remember a long time ago, they were like talking about doing an animated version. This is when they were making the Iron Giant. It would be a great animated but movie. But you know why people were like, like this is, I'm not kidding. This is the kind of weirdness that we live in, the weird world where people who don't read comics are like, isn't the New Gods just a little too much like Star Wars? <laughs> Literally. That's what was. It's that's why it got not. shut down. No, no, it's because the source and the force. It's like um, I know, but the new gods came out years before Star yeah. Wars. So isn't Star, Star Wars, Wars a little bit <laughs> like the new gods? Ah, no. So sorry. Uh, oh, it's like oh, it's the Dark Father. I am your father. The Son. I guess. Yeah. Just read the new gods if you enjoy Star Wars. Anyway, yeah, there you go. Oh, running, so out to right running out of time. Running out of time. That's a whole other episode. It really is. I want to thank my panel, John Roca. Where can people find you online? Hey guys, you can always find me at the Roca says on Twitter. Twitter and on Instagram. Every Friday, please download The Cinephiles, uh, we, uh, my podcast where I do with Steve Morris, where we break down one classic film before the year 2000. And of course, the Outlaw Nation podcast every Thursday morning on the SK Plus podcast channel. That's a Schmoes No Plus podcast channel. This week's going to be fantastic. Jay Washington coming on to talk to Black Panther trailer. Mark Nobleman to talk about Batman and Bill documentary. I'm interviewing him. Mm. And of course, Matt Nose coming back to talk about the NBA Finals. So those are my... And Collider movie talk at 10 a.m. every Friday. Yeah, I'm so glad that Bill Finger finally got his just yeah, credits. Such a great mm -hmm. documentary. I mean, it's like the, the crushing truth sometimes is, yeah. is yeah, uh, yeah. <laughs> as long as you get the truth out, that's even if it's crushing, it's good. Yeah. Ashley, where can people find you online? Find me on Instagram and Twitter at Ashley V. Robinson. Check out Geek History Lesson every week. We just released a bunch of enameled pins that you can go and buy at geekhistorylesson.com. And if you want to pre-order the comic that I co-wrote with Jason Inman, get it at backerkit.jupiterjet.com. And uh, maybe we'll be able to bring you some rewards at San Diego Comic-Con this year. When is Jupiter Jet, is it, when is it scheduled to come out, the first issue? They won't solicit it until we're done all five issues. Okay. And we are about halfway through the art on issue five. So last quarter of this year. Can you have perhaps like a six page ash can preview that you could have at San Diego Comic-Con? We might could have a whole first issue at San Diego Comic-Con. All right. Well, stay tuned. We will <laughs> we'll make sure that you know where you can get that Jupiter Jet flavor at San Diego Comic-Con. We're all going to be there sweating it out. Once again, try to get my isolated mutations of the assembly line baby book. It's on Kickstarter right now. It's the last couple days. You're not going to hear me talking about it anymore. So help me get this weird book made. You're not going to regret it. It's definitely weird. I can guarantee you that. Guess what's coming back next week? Collider Heroes episode 114. See you then. Hey guys, if you like this video, click the thumbs up button. Also, make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel. It'll help you stay up to date with everything we've got going on here at Collider.